before Erin runs away, we wanted to thank Erin because she's been wonderful in helping us put this together. And of course, we'd like to welcome you. Um, as I said, my name is Kiri Stillman, and that's Peggy Marks, and this is our business uh, college interview counselors. So we have a lot to cover in basically an hour. So we're going to talk about, we're going to give you the basics. We're going to talk about interviews, how to make yourself impressive, mock interviews, interview assessments, and what in really what a positive write-up is all about. Um, but just a background, I think we had some materials there. Our focus of, in this whole process is college interviews. That's all we do. That's our sweet spot. And um, so we work one-on-one -on -one with people, but we also do these seminars and hope to really talk about how important the college interview is, and then how important it is for you as a life skill. Um, I see a lot of adults here. How many of you have been on an interview throughout your life? Okay. How many of you wish that maybe you could have done something differently in your interview? Nobody? I have. Uh, I wish somebody had given me the information we're going to give you tonight, because these are life skills. These are just not for college. This is for the rest of your life. Uh, and we basically have a methodology and a rubric that we use to evaluate the interview and hopefully create better interviewees. Come on in, come sit down. Okay, so what we usually do is we start off because it's, it's nice for people to get to know one another. If you can just briefly say who you are and where you're from, you want to start? Okay, and you're in Darien High School or? Great, what year are you? Great, and you are from? Ah. Hello, Diana. Okay, guys. You're a junior? Welcome, Perrin. I'm a junior at Great. Nice. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. We're both from we're both from Greenwich. There he is. He's sitting right there. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, wow. You're busy. I don't even want to think about college applications. What year are they? They're juniors? Oh, goodness. Okay. Oh, go ahead. No, you. Yeah. Of course. We were just joking about. What is the best night? And we were having this discussion. Is it Thursday night, Tuesday night, Friday's the test, whatever? Not a good night. Never, never a good night when you're a junior. <laughs> Would you? Go ahead. No, I'm Bob. Uh, my son does. Okay. Yes? My, my name is Dan Ward. I'm from Arlington, Michigan. Oh, which I'm school? Ah, oh, cool. Well, welcome. Tell us if we miss anything, okay? No, I'm here to learn what the <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> well, anybody who's applying to Yale, make sure you listen. <laughs> yes? Darianne? Okay, great, welcome. Who am I on to? There you go. Rhett? I'm Japanese, and I have three grades this year. Oh, my. Starting early. Good for you. Yes? Can't hear you, sorry. Welcome. You're starting early, and you are great. In the back? There you are. Oh, wow. And you? At GHS. Okay. And who have I missed? Ah. Great. And the man taking off his jacket. At Darianne? Great. Well, everybody, um, these are introductions, and I guess nobody's really in the middle of doing their applications, but obviously that's to come. Okay, so why are we here? We want you to have knowledge about the college interviews, college interview process, and how it all works. So you can do your best, because you do not want to give colleges a reason to say no. And as you know, it's a very uh, competitive, uh, situation and lots of kids applying for limited space and you want to do your best. Uh, should we wait till these people come in or that's okay. So what are we trying to get you to have is a conversation. 
when you interview, the best thing to have is a conversation. Because if you have a conversation, it's an exchange of ideas, it's relaxed, and the more you prepare, I can't underscore this enough, the more you prepare, the better off you will be for your interview. Now, this is a relaxed environment. We all know each other now, so if you have questions, just raise your hand, okay? My background and what, and what I bring to the table is I'm a marketing branding expert in my other life and in my current life. I've worked at General Foods, Cuisinarts, General Motors, and Nestle. Peggy? And I was the uh, chairperson for the Tufts Alumni Interview Committee for over 15 years, and that actually was the seed of how we started this company because we realized that many of you are like deer caught in the headlights, and we wanted to teach you how to sit down for your one-shot, one-time interview in order to get into the college of your choice. I also own another company uh, that deals with uh, high-end women's accessories, and I helped uh, high-level executives learn how to speak at the podium in front of Peggy large audiences. Peggy dresses me before all this because <laughs> I have no fashion sense. So, so anyway, we did this for about 15 years, so we we have a lot of experience. So we want you to have an impressive interview, and for most schools, we want you to know, as I just said, there are multiple applications for limited spaces, okay? So you've worked really hard on your scores, on your transcripts, on studying for your tests, extracurricular, but you still need to differentiate yourself. And importantly, the interviews happen sort of at the tail end in many instances of the process is you have to keep up that effort throughout the whole process. I kind of alluded to, if you're an alumni interview, which we'll ex explain later, um, usually it's in, let's say, January and February, and you're exhausted. You've been through this process. Don't drop the ball on the 90-yard line. Keep your focus and do the best job you can, because every piece counts. So this is Interviews 101. Why do you think that schools offer interviews? Anybody have any ideas? Raise your hands, come on. Why would I want to interview you? There you go. Right? Yeah. Okay. Any other ideas? Okay, those are two very good answers. Right, so they want to know you as a person. They want to be able to say, okay, this is Susie Smith, and I had a really good interaction with her. We had really good eye contact. She knew about the school. It was a very positive interchange. So again, to glean an applicant's personality, drive, and reason for attending a particular school. Important, you need to do your research. You need to understand why you want to go to that school, because the interviewer, Mr. Yale is going to want to know, I'm just telling you, you're going to want to know why they want to go to Yale. I'm making a joke. But seriously, um, many students come to interviews and they don't even know why they want to go to that school. Really important. They want to make sure that the paperwork that you've submitted is reflected in who you are. Because again, that's supposed to work together. Um, they want, when they, when they uh, sit around a table, they create a community of students. They try to get a broad range of representation. So by having that interview, they can tell, well, this person seems to be this way, this person seems to be that way, and they build that mix of that community. And it adds an, another dimension to the whole process. So the sooner you're, you learn these skills, the better you're going to be for not only college, inter college internships, jobs, bad interview habits start early. If you don't prepare, that's the number one problem. So this is your opportunity to give you a, a good base. So who, what students here have had an interview? Have you had an interview? Any students? Okay. So this is really your first time in an interview situation. So you need to present yourself in your best possible light, either to an alumni person or the in admissions staff. Now, I wish I could tell you that the conditions are going to be in an office, typically with you and one person. But for alumni interviews, 
most of them are conducted in a public space, okay? Um, who's been in a coffee shop like Starbucks and sat next to somebody being interviewed? You have, you have? I, can, I can't tell you how many times Peggy and I have been, I mean, that was our home away from home with Starbucks. And um, they got to know us because we were there so frequently. And we would sit and there would be two other interviews being conducted. So what happens in a public space? Is it a, a space that you can easily concentrate in? Okay, so what happens in a Starbucks? The barista's screaming, their baby's crying. So again, it's really difficult for you to focus and communicate what you need to communicate. So why are interviews important? Interviews for admission are offered and encouraged at 95% of the top 75 colleges. So if you go to the Bible, US News and World Report, you can look. 88% of the top 25 universities. So they want you to interview, and a lot of those conversations are evaluative. So this is what the colleges say. An interview is a great way for a member of the admissions committee to get to know you, what we've talked about, more than your SAT or ACT scores. They say, treat this as a job interview, as it is an important piece of our holistic review. An interview is our chance to get to know you as a person. And that's really important. As you think about your, I keep on saying your conversation, it's your chance to let them know about you, what's so special, why they should choose you. So the personality, putting a face to the name, and we, uh, the last one, we strongly recommend a personal interview. Without one, some students may be at a disadvantage. In fact, there's one of the top schools where the admissions rate um, I'll say this, is about 10.6% if you opt in for an interview. If you decide not to opt in, it's 0.6%. So if you have the chance to interview, opt in. It's important. OK, so who are you going to interview with? Ta-da, here's Peggy and I, and there's Mr. Yale. OK, so <laughs> I keep on calling you Mr. My Yale. Name is Ward. Ward. <laughs> Hi, Ward. Hi, Ward. Thank you. I'm, you, you know. Um, so, it's alumni, and why do we interview? We are volunteers, right Ward? We're volunteers, and we're doing this because we want to give back to the university. Um, many are older and some are not. In fact, there are a lot of younger interviewers, and don't be fooled by a younger interviewer, and do not treat them like a peer, because a lot of them are two or three years out, and you, go, and you think, oh, I can be really relaxed, and I don't have to you know, really do my thing. Well, don't be fooled, because they're as critical as an older person like me. Um, treat them with respect and value their time. Again, be on time. Know where you're going. I can't tell you how many times kids don't do the work, and this is all about being prepared. Find out where the place is. GPS it. Make sure you're going to the right Starbucks. In Where we interview in Greenwich alone, how many Starbucks are there? Six. Six. There's six Starbucks. and so. I'm very specific about the, the uh, location, but I've had kids arrive at ones all over the place. So important. Um, the other people who, would, uh, who will interview you are college admissions staff. Now, some staff are counselors, and then there are students who are trained interviewers. So many uh, colleges and universities don't have the bandwidth to have the actual admission staff interview everybody. So they have college students, so they have their juniors and seniors. But again, treat them as you would a regular interviewer. So who, where, and when? So when? The summer before, or fall or early spring of the, of the uh, senior year. Summer before um, would be typically on-campus interviews. And if you're visiting schools this summer, Many schools offer on-campus interviews with, with the, uh, the admission staff or a student. And you should try to get one of those. If not, then the fall or early spring are alumni. Sometimes a college admission staff person will be in the area, and they will be doing a presentation. And then if you've struck up a conversation with them or whatever or asked for an interview, then they can interview you. Any, any questions so far? Is everybody tracking what I'm saying? Go ahead. It's a 
a good question. You can't do both. Um, I think it depends upon two things. Are you ready to do one in the summer? In other words, is that a school you're really interested in? Do you want to spend the time to do it? And do you feel that you know enough at that point to do it? If, if the answer is to yes. To make a positive impression. Right. Then I would do it. If you feel that you need a little more time to get more information, to prepare, then I would do it in the, in the fall. Or you know, if you're, if you're applying early decision, then it's in the fall for sure. Um, but if you're applying regular, then it's typically December, January, February. Does Whether you're sense? interviewed by the alumnus or the on-campus admissions officer, your write-up will be included in your file. So that's totally equal. It's really your question of, of how prepared you are. Any other questions before I move on? OK. So let's talk about some interview tips. OK. And this is not rocket science. This is just creating, you want to create a conversation. I can't underscore that enough. And a dialogue. So as I said, be on time. The interview is usually about 30 minutes long. Sometimes it's longer. I mean, it depends upon how it goes. I mean, I've had interviews go for an hour. I'm sure Peggy has too. Um, but you don't want to waste any valuable time. So get there early. It's really nice if the interviewer walks in and you're sitting there waiting for them, saying, oh, you know, I'm here waiting. I'm ready. Shake your interviewer's hand. Really nice. And look them in the eye. Establish eye contact. Really important. Engage your interviewers. So think about why you want to go. What, is, what are you going to contribute to the school? What is going to be your added value to the school? Know why that school is a great fit for you. What is it about that school that attracted you to it? What is it excited you about? And really show that excitement to the interviewer. It's, um, it gets them you know, excited as well. They're thinking, oh, you know, I went to the school. I'm really enthusiastic about my school. I'm giving all this time. And this person's really excited about coming there. And they've done their homework. And they're on time. And they can do all these things to make my school better. Because alumni eventually want really good alumni as well. Because that's part of creating that community. Um, have some really good questions. Think about what you'd really like to know. Because the interviewer will inevitably say, what, kind of, what questions do you have for me? And that shouldn't be like, uh, I don't have any questions. Of course you have questions. Just think about what those questions will be. And try to get their email, if you can, and uh, at a minimum, because you should send them a thank you email. And I can't stress email enough, because some interviewers finish, like me, because we had a lot on our plate, I would go back, write up my interview, and send it off, because I had a lot going on. So I would do mine pretty quickly. And then, um, so the written snail mail is great, but many times that comes after the person's already submitted, particularly if you get towards the end of the interview season, where uh, time is of the essence. because. The schools want the interview write-ups as early as possible. If you're talking top schools, they're getting you know, 15, 17, 20,000 applicants. So they want to be able to read a file as early as possible. Any questions about the interview? Yeah. Um, how would you go about asking for email? Well, I'd say um, I would like to stay in contact with you and say I'd like to, you know, send your thank you note. Can I have your email? If they say no, then they say no. But at least you've made the effort to recognize their effort. But also, you may have gotten it already, because in this day and age, when the interviewer gets your file, or a, a little snippet of your file, it has your email address on it. And the interviewer may have made contact with you through email. So you may have it already. I, actually, why don't you talk about that process? Because they might not know how. Um, chair, as I said, Peggy and I were co-chairs um, of an alumni group at the Tufts. Peggy was my fearless leader. So once, so. Your, once your application is submitted to whatever school, and uh, it, at some schools it's not the full application. Sometimes there is a preliminary application. Uh, but once most of your application is submitted, 
uh, your name is put on a roster within the committee uh, where you are geographically. And at that time, I would take all of your names and assign you to an interviewer. I try to focus it on what it is you want to study. I try to focus it on your geography because I don't want the interviewer or you traveling to the end of the world for this interview. Um, and uh, many times I try to uh, match up uh, females with females only because um, we had some incidents in the past, and this is why we all have to interview in a public place now, because some parents got a little alarmed having their precious little princess with a male in, in a non-public setting. So that's how this all happened. But beyond that, more importantly, I want to match you with someone who had similar interests to yours. One other thing I should mention, how many of you are really, really busy or have students who are, or have children who are really, really busy? Okay. So I'm going to call up or I'm going to send you an email and I'm going to say, I'm uh, Siri Stillman, I'd like to set up an interview with you and these are the times that I'm available. Okay, so you have both of those times you're busy, okay? Um, how do you think you should manage this? If, if the school is sending you an interview request and it's high on your list, do you think you should try to reschedule something else? Or do you think you should say, no, those don't work for me? Any ideas? Yeah. OK. You could. But if that school is really important to you, and you have a volunteer who's doing this with limited time, you might consider changing your schedule or asking your coach or your music director. Um, by the way, both of us have three kids who have been through this process. Um, one of mine went to Tufts, Dartmouth, and Johns Hopkins, and Peggy's, or Princeton, USC, and Tufts. Um, we've been through this. I can, I can suggest to you that you might want to have a little more flexibility. What do you guys think? Any other thoughts about that? No? Well, something to consider, OK? Because it shows the interviewer that it's important to you. And that's really what it's all about. OK. Oops. OK. So if an alumnus is positive about you, he wants you to be accepted. Now, when you make a great impression, they write wonderful write-ups because we've seen them. They're really, really, I mean, these people spend a lot of time on meeting with you, writing them up. So it's a really, it's, it's a great thing to have a positive write-up in your uh, application folder. So one of the things that Peggy and I would least like about our job is the whole acceptance, denial, and wait list. And when somebody writes a wonderful uh, interview write-up, it was really tough for our interviewers. So know that they pay, have pain and suffering with you or happiness with you one way or the other. So let's talk about the impressive you. Now, how many students do I have here tonight? OK. Um, what I would like you to do, and parents can do this too, because it's probably a good exercise, is we want you to take five minutes and write up what you think your key strengths are. And we're going to ask students to present them to the group. We want you to focus on four, because these are the things that we would like you to consider focusing in on your interview. Don't forget, the interviewer has to do a write-up on you. And if you give them too many pieces of information, they're not going to know what to write about. So I have a form here. Where are our forms? Did you do that? What? No. Does everybody have a pen or a pencil or something to write with? Wonderful. Peggy, do you want me to hand up? You're the student. Unless you have this one. 
So I want each of you, parents included, to think about, because you've had interviews, what are you passionate about? What are you most proud of? How did you make a difference? And what is your key strength? Yeah, I'll have, I have some pencils then. Sounds easy, but it's not that easy. Anybody need a form? Does everybody have a pen? Something? We have pencils. Is that good? <laughs> and it's important for the students that parents do not help them in this exercise, okay? You, you all have to do it yourself. You can have it, I think. <laughs> I, I said you're not supposed to help her. Because it's got to come to her herself. Anybody need a writing utensil? No? Okay. Depends on the school. Um, some there schools is there is a, on on many applications there is a box that you check off whether you want an interview or not. And as we discussed earlier, please do not check off that you do not want an interview. Um, and in other cases, not on the Common App. Um, it's usually on the supplements because not all schools offer interviews. 